my name is Mrs. Shardle. Welcome to the art room. We are going to go over some rules and procedures on our first week of school. So stay tuned for some important information. At this point, most of you know how to do school. Um, a quick recap is when you walk into the art room, come in, have a seat, sit quietly, wait to get started. Um, when somebody's talking, you are not, don't interrupt them, raise your hand, and wait to be called on, don't just raise your hand. If there are materials on the table, please don't touch them or distribute them. You don't know what they are there for, so leave them be. So a few areas in the art room that we do not need to go behind or venture as students include behind the teacher's art desk, the cutting board in the corner of the art room, or behind the kiln table on the side of the art room. The kiln table is there for your protection uh, to keep you from possibly getting burned while the kiln is going. And the cutting board is a teacher tool that students do not need to be around to touch or go near. It is dangerous um, and I do not expect to see anybody touching that at any time. Material safety and use. So the simplest thing to stay safe in the art class is to follow the rules. A few things that you do need to know. Uh, rulers are not toys. They don't need swung. Uh, they aren't lightsabers or magic wands. They aren't swords. They don't need bounced off the table or tapped on the table. They are Rulers are used to measure and draw straight lines. Scissors. When you are carrying scissors from one point to another, it is best to wrap your hand around the actual cutters of the scissors and hold them pointing down. Never carry them with the points facing up, out, or in towards your body in case you were to fall. You never want to slide scissors across the table, or a pencil across the table for that matter, um, just because you don't know who a, could be picking something up off the ground and accidentally get hit in the head with a pair of scissors. Don't slide things across the table unless it's, for example, like an eraser would be fine. When you are using scissors or any kind of blade, you are always to cut away from your body. If you look around the room, you should find the tool rule, which states, I will cut away from myself and never have my hand in the path of a blade, cutter, or any tool that could hurt me. I will follow rules and keep myself and others safe. Uh, the next thing I'd like to talk about is seats. Please don't tip them and make sure you push them in when you aren't sitting in them. When you are sitting in them, sit on your behind, not your knees, not backwards, not straddled, not to the side. I'm gonna show you how not to sit in your seats. <laughs> These are all bad ways to sit in a seat. Your bum needs to be in the seat. I will give you one warning about tipping your chair. After that, you will be standing. Um, pencils. Please don't tap your pencils. It breaks the lead inside. You sharpen it and it falls out. You sharpen it and it falls out. Um, electric sharpeners are not for the colored pencils. It is only for the regular pencils. We have hand cranks for the colored pencils. Often those need to be done over a garbage can as to not make a mess. Clean up, clean up, everybody everywhere. Clean up, clean up, everybody do your share. Clean up, clean up, everybody everywhere. Clean up, clean up, everybody do your share. Clean All right, ladies and gentlemen, time to clean up. Crayons away. These are examples of what you don't do. One student is ignoring me and another is frantically coloring to try to finish their project. In this case, you owe me retraining time and you owe me retraining time. When it is time to clean up, it is time to clean up. I'm not saying it just to say it. I have to get you guys out of my room and the next class in my room in a matter of minutes. So please, when I ask you to clean up, do so. Other things.
things to keep in mind. Um, the art classroom is not a place where papers or markers or pencils or erasers need to be thrown through the air. I do not want to see anything thrown in this classroom. You don't go to your homeroom and throw your iPad across the room. You don't go to the cafeteria and throw your lunch across the room. You don't go to the music room and throw a ukulele or a tambourine across the room. So items do not need to be thrown in the art room. I will indeed write you up for that. My trash cans are not basketball hoops. And please do not make paper airplanes. I know you want to fly them once you make them, and I understand that. So to avoid that, just please do not make them. Uh, we don't need to yell across the room. You can talk quietly to the people at your table. Please don't bring toys to the art room that I'm going to have to take from you and play with myself. Um, please do not tell anybody to S up. You know what it is. It's shut up. It's not nice, and we don't like it. Another thing, we don't touch each other. Keep your hands to yourself. You don't need to be poking <laughs> or touching each other's hair or even worse, hitting, slapping, punching. In addition to that, don't let me ever see you draw on somebody else's artwork. That is not yours to do. And I take that very seriously. drill we are going to need a line leader and a caboose so I'm going to tell you the roles of each and then Mrs. Shardle will probably assign these after you're done watching this video the line leader is going to be responsible for grabbing the to-go bag they are also going to be responsible for going leading the class out the store it's really loud out there down these stairs right beside the restroom. Out the back door, you're going to go around the school and to the parking lot by the playground. All the way back. So the line leader's got the bag on. He's leading, he's leading, he's leading, and all the way to the back of the parking lot. All of a sudden, when you turn around, that line leader is no longer the leader, but instead, they would be the caboose. So that's job number one. Job number two is the caboose. When we are leaving the room, the caboose is responsible for turning the lights off right over here and closing the door. Mr. Shardle has to go across the way and make sure that no students are in the restroom when a fire drill happens. So it's really important that our line leader and our caboose know what they are doing. So let's pretend we're in the parking lot again. The line leader, who is now the caboose, is gonna walk this bag up to the caboose, who is now the leader. And they are going to wait for me to say either we're good or not and pull out that green or red paper. The caboose, who turned off the lights and closed the door but is now the leader, is going to lead us back into the building. Remember during a fire drill, we are quiet, we are safe, and we are pretending we're practicing in case it was a real emergency. Speaking of real emergencies, if ever there is a lockdown, hopefully it's just a drill, but a lockdown would happen if there were somebody in the building that wished to cause us harm. There would be an announcement over the speaker and we would go into a very serious hide and go seek mode. So these are jam locks. Mrs. Sharda would jam lock this door and lock it. We would all go into the storage room, the art storage room which is here. I would lock this door, I would lock that door. And we would crouch down and be quiet, basically hide in the storage room, okay? There's a blind on that window, so it's a little safer than here. Additionally, if ever we needed to get out of the window to get out of the building, there is a slanted roof that we could jump on before we jump to the ground. So we're not jumping for two stories high, right? So jam locks in here and here, and that's the lockdown drill in the storage room. 
classroom volume in the art room. We are all familiar with the traffic light and what this means. Green is your inside voices. That means that you are talking at a normal level to the people around you. Yellow is the whisper. So if we are too loud on green, then Mrs. Shardle will move us to yellow, which means that we can still talk to our friends, but in a whisper voice. Red light means that we're silent for five minutes. As a class, nobody is to talk for five minutes. Mrs. Shardle is going to set the timer and as long as we make it to the five minutes without somebody talking, then we can go back to yellow. However, if we don't make it the full five minutes and somebody decides that they're going to talk, the time restarts. In that next five minutes, if somebody talks again, the time restarts. And it continues on and on and on. All right, the art room. Things haven't changed that much over the years. Let's start here, I guess. This is the desk. We know we aren't going behind it, right? R2-D2 is not running right now because it's kind of loud, but this is our air conditioning unit. We have our coloring pages and markers. Our tool roll is over here. Um, we also have our lists of what we are going to be doing each day or projects when you come in. There might be a couple listed. Right now we just have the beginning of the year projects. So if you were in first grade, this would be your first grade project, third grade, so on and so forth. Our no-no area, the cutting board. The cutting board, do not touch it. We know this. I'm saying that for your safety reasons, this will be an automatic right up to the principal's office if you are over here touching this. Continuing on, we have our pencil sharpeners. Use these for regular pencils, unless Mrs. Shardle tells you to use them for colored pencils. Continue moving. We have sink one, we have sink two, we have our drying racks. Two trash cans on each side. Mrs. Shardle, where are those trash cans in this room? We have one here, one here, one up on my desk, and another one up on my desk, which kind of floats from here from time to time. I move it around the room. Let's continue on. This is our counter that we typically lay materials out for you at. So I, a lot of times, will have water cups prepped and ready for you to go in sink one. Or I will have paint sets out here for you. There's not a lot out right now because we're not using it right now. I try to put it away as we're not using it. Our crayon bins are always over here. Now these little crayon bins like to get stuck together. I have them kind of tilted so that they don't never carry more than two crayon bins at a time because they can get heavy. If they are stuck together, and this is not gonna stick, it's just almost like a vacuum seal. Eventually if you hold one bin, it'll pop off. When I put these back over here, I just kind of tilted them so that they would be easily um, separated. Continue around the room. We have our cubby counter. It has been here for several years. It's been here probably since most of you have been in school. You're divided by grades. You are then also divided by class folders. So your teacher's name and their class code will be on there. We have our light switch right over here. So in the case of a fire drill, the caboose would need to know where the light switch is. We have our emergency bag, which the line leader would need to know where that is in the case of a fire drill. Our main door, our front table. You do not need to ask me to borrow things from the front table. You can use a pencil, you can use a ruler. You may use a Sharpie marker if you are in grades three, four, five, or six without permission. Please make sure you put a piece of free draw paper underneath if you're using a Sharpie marker as it tends to bleed through. There should be hand sanitizer and erasers. Often there are the drawing crayons and tissue paper. Um, jam lock for the art room is right in this general vicinity. You will not be coming back here because this is the kiln and remember the kiln gets hot. So at times 
you might be on the other side of the kiln table, but Mrs. Shuttle is the only one that ventures back here. Continuing around, we have the door to our storage room. In the case of the lockdown, I said that we would be going in here, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. Our color wheel and monitor brings you back to the front of the room. A few other things to keep in mind is that when we put our name on our paper, we are going to put our name and class code along the bottom edge of our paper. We don't want it in the center of our paper unless Mrs. Shardle directs you to do that. We get one coloring page per class. You can have more free draw paper, but as far as printed coloring pages, we get one. You are always to line up in number order if you have it. Always, 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 I don't want to hear, Miss Sharnel is in number order. Uh, yes. This is what it looks like when you are clean, quiet, ready to go. Your booties are in a seat. Your materials are cleaned up. You're sitting and waiting patiently to be called to line up. Now for a demonstration on how to line up at the end of class. Hmm, looks like everybody is clean, quiet, and ready to go with their booties in a seat and lip zipped. So how about my blue tables? Quietly stand, push in your seats, and line up. Remember, it is always number order unless your class does not have one. Nice job, blue tables. Red tables, quietly stand, push in your seats and you may line up. And my yellow tables. Notice how they are in a single file line. Their hands are to their sides. They're facing forward with their eyes open and lips zipped. Great job, guys. Please don't tattle unless it's a medical emergency. I do not care if Joe Schmo does not like your fish drawing, and you shouldn't care either. Now, if Joe Schmo is bleeding, I need to know that. Now, in the case of an emergency, if you are going to be sick, you do not need to sit there with your hand raised waiting for me to acknowledge you. You get to a trash can, you get to the restroom, you get where you need to go because it's an emergency. If you are missing for a music lesson or you came in late or left early for whatever reason, it is your responsibility to make up that assignment. So how art works is I teach the first half of class and then you go back to your seats and do what you've just been taught. If you come in after I've already taught it, it is your responsibility to find a reliable classmate or student teacher that might be able to help you get caught up on what you missed. And vice versa, if you are here for the teaching part but aren't going to get to make your project, see me about setting up a time to come down to do it outside of class. Candy. Most of us know the rules at this point, but few simple rules to remember. Don't ask if you're getting candy, or you're not. Candy is a reward for going above and beyond, not for doing what you're supposed to do in the first place. I can't give out candy every class period. You never know when you're actually going to get it. And if we cry because we didn't get candy that day, we're going to have to wait a few classes before we try again. So no tears and no asking for candy. Now, wasn't that just so much fun? I'm glad that's out of the way. 
So stay tuned in case I have any more announcements for you, but next class, we're gonna get to it. We're sorry, the number you have dialed is not in service at this time.